Hey guys, Bradley Hallman here. Really appreciate you guys being with me. I guess you'll notice I've got a little bit different look here today with the microphone right here in front of me. And I've actually got a new camera too that I'm working on with the uh, uh, on the computer here. They're trying to kind of get that Bass Talk Live deal just so I've got another little studio that's easier for me to film and use for you guys when I'm at home. Um, today we're actually going to go over some stuff that I have done before, uh, videos on how to break down a lake. Seems to be one of you guys' favorites. If you're new here and you've never been here before, please think about hitting that subscribe button. Uh, go back. I think there's probably 10 videos or 11 videos right now in that group uh, in the queue. You can find it on my channel where we've done this exact same thing before on different lakes, different styles of lakes across the country. Um, today we're going to cover a river run lake. It's a river run system. We're going to cover the springtime. Um, the one that I have chosen for today's topic is going to be Old Hickory, just because it's right outside of Nashville, Tennessee, where there's a lot of people and influx of people that do fish that lake. So um, it's a lake that I've been to a couple of times. I, uh, I fished an Elite Series event there somewhere probably around 2009 or 2010. And then I also qualified for the BFL All-American there somewhere around that time frame also. So um, I do have some experience there. So the times of year that I've been there have not been the spring, but I do have some understanding of this reservoir. So I probably will talk a little bit more knowledgeable about this place. Um, I don't claim to know everything for sure, um, but I promise you that I can help you get some logistics down just on different seasonal patterns of, of how I approach uh, a lake, a reservoir, a river, um, a tidal impoundment, whatever it may be. Um, the seasonal patterns that I use and the ways that I locate bass from my house before I even set foot out on the lake. Because I'm just like you guys, whether you're working or you got kids or jobs and sports, you're limited to the amount of time that you have to, to invest on your actual fishing day. So if I can give you some pointers that you can do just right here on your phone or Google Earth or off of some mapping stuff, then that takes away from, that, that actually gives you time to be more successful on the lake while you're out there. So if you guys will hold on, we'll get right to it and we'll jump into Old Hickory. Okay guys, so on this one in particular right here, we're covering springtime, how to break down a lake in the spring. So really to me, the spring is a three-part subject. Um, it's really the pre-spawn, the spawn, and the post-spawn. And so for this video's purpose, I'm gonna just really focus on the pre-spawn because that's really where we are right now for the majority of the country. And uh, you guys up north are gonna be there the soonest. So I'm gonna cover the pre-spawn and leading into a little bit of the spawn. Um, I promise I'll make another one of these videos. I'll pick somewhere else in the country and we'll do a post-spawn pattern. Um, I may even pick a blueback lake just because the blueback herring lakes are really, really special on the post-spawn side of it. So you guys hold on for that video coming. I will promise you I try to get that thing done. Um, for this one right here, we're focused on Old Hickory. We're going to cover the pre-spawn and uh, leading up just up to the spawn and then we'll kind of cut off there but we're going to use navionics maps so i'm going to show you guys how to pull up navionics maps just off of the internet it's free everybody can use it and along with google earth and some of the tools that i use inside of google earth and if you guys haven't seen some of my videos in the past you might want to go back and check some of them to see some of the little intricacies of how to use some of these tools i will go over a few of them in this video but not cover all of them um, really what I'm focused on here is, is just how to break down a lake in the springtime pre-spawn before you go fishing. Okay guys, so here we are on Navionics. This is just Navionics.com. Um, and it's free for anybody to use. You can go here and go to the chart viewer. We're going to click on the chart viewer right there on the top right hand hand. Uh, mine starts in Oklahoma because that's where I live. We're going to move over here to Nashville, Tennessee, um, to Old Hickory Lake, which is just northeast of Nashville. <clears throat> this is a really cool impoundment. Um, Old Hickory is actually a TVA lake, but it is not actually on the Tennessee River like a lot of the majority of the world famous uh, TVA lakes such as Pickwick, Gunnersville, Kentucky Lake. Um, this is actually on the Cumberland River. Um, this is the one that goes on down and eventually ties into um, one of my very favorite lakes in the world, and I went blank, uh, Lake Barkley that ties into next to Kentucky before they dump into the Ohio River. So um, really cool reservoir. Um, like I said, I've been here for a couple of events. I've gone out of a couple of places. Um, an Elite Series event that I fished in 2009 or so went out of the back of this creek down here. And then the majority of the tournaments, I believe, go out here at this bridge. Um, I don't recall the name of this. There's a really cool tackle store right here at this uh, at this area of the lake as well. But 
Um, I think a lot of the tournaments generally go out right around in this area, out of this cove. Um, and that's where I went out uh, for the BFL that I qualified for the All-American out of. Okay, so this is around the Gallatin area. And uh, you can use the Navionics map. I'm going to go through this, but I'm really what I'm going to dig into um, for the most part is I'm going to dig into Google Earth here in a little bit, and that's where we'll spend most of our time. I'm a visual guy. I like to use Google Earth. I love Google Earth, but I also like to back it up with the Navionic stuff that we see. So um, let's start with the type of impoundment this is. Um, for you guys that are new and haven't been here, really there's three or four or five different kinds of impoundments, and they really have an effect on how bass relate and what they do in all their seasonal movements, not just in the spring, but summer, fall, and winter. Um, the different types of impoundment lakes we have, we have a highland reservoir type lake, which would be like a Table Rock of Bull Shoals. You have a midland type reservoir, which is somewhere like closer to where I live, Grand Lake uh, in Oklahoma. Uh, this lake here in particular would also be considered midland um, somewhat. And then lowland reservoirs, which is more like a Sam Rayburn, a Santee Cooper. Uh, you see those lakes down by the coast. They're very flat. Um, they don't have a lot of rock. There's just kind of like a cat milk bowl. The Midland lakes like this kind of have a little bit of both. Um, this one has some highland features, highland reservoir features to it. And it's really got more highland features to it than it really has lowland features. So it's, it's right on that borderline of being a Midland. But it's the thing that changes this one is, is so with, those are the three different types of reservoirs. But then we also have river systems, true river systems, such as the Arkansas River, the Mississippi River. But then we have these river run lakes, which is where the TVA stuff falls in, where they kind of act like a reservoir, but then they kind of act like a river. Um, the TVA ones really like, if you guys just watched the Bassmaster event that just went on at Pickwick, those fish were extremely current oriented. Like that is their jam. That's what they do. Um, this stuff up here on the Cumberland doesn't have as much flow, right, as compared to Pickwick. It's not, it's not catching the same amount of drainage uh, that those lakes are, but yet it still is a river. So it is a river run lake, and you will definitely want to keep that in mind because, like I say, it's going to have a huge effect on how these fish uh, transition throughout the year. Um, you usually want to break a lake down into two or three, four parts. You know, you're going to have a lower basin of a reservoir that's going to be closer to the dam. This is going to be your deeper, you know, usually your steeper, uh, rockier uh, parts of the lake. And then as you move up, you have a midland part of the, of the reservoir. And this one pretty much falls in place with that, where the creeks and things start to go further back and, 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 and be a little bit more windy. And then you kind of have the river run section. And uh, most reservoirs are, have these, these different types of systems. Um, this one just is a little more river run than a true uh, impoundment lake. You know, like I say, you know, something that has a dam that, that may have generators on it, but doesn't have a locking dam on it for sure. Um, if you live on a river system or a lake that has a locking dam, it's for dang sure a river for the most part. Um, that that's pretty much settles it. But it's it's all really amount about, amounts to the amount of water that's flowing up and down this lake. So um, the bottom end of this lake, I know I spent some time down here, has some offshore features. Summertime offshore flats, you'll see just like these right here that are that are very typical of TVA where things are really you're out in the middle of the lake, but they're only five or six foot deep off of some of these ledges um, with these creek channels that come in. And these are these are really historically been great places to fish in the summer um, on the TVA systems. Um, I was there in the summer once and um, they really while we did catch fish off of them, uh, most of the fish in this lake at that time. Uh, we're caught more in the upper ends of it, back in the backs of the creeks. These fish really do um, live in the creeks, and they live down here as well. I'm not saying that. Um, what is the name of this creek right here? Drake's Creek. This was uh, this was the one that our tournament went out of. Lots of water willow and cover um, uh, all throughout this lake. Those really were the main types of cover were, were the creek channels, uh, the creek bends, a lot of rock, and a lot of water willow, and a lot of docks. So docks and water willow uh, really end up being the primary with rock, end up being the primary uh, types of habitat on uh, old hickory. Um, so things that I'm looking for in the springtime. So let's let's break this down pretty quick. Um, I'm wanting to find fish that they're looking to spawn, right? That That's the main thing going on. So now that I've established what type of reservoir that I'm fishing, this one happens to be a river run system. Um, 
it really helps cut this process down quicker just for the fact that it is a river system because um, the one thing that bass do not care for in the spring is current. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking about the week or two weeks before they spawn that they won't sit out here and eat in the current because they will. We just saw that. But when they actually get in the mood to do their deal and to start laying beds, um, they want in the back of this right here. Now, they want in the back of this right here because there's no current flowing. Um, river systems are also notorious for blowing out. And what I mean by blowing out is we get heavy rainstorms, thunderstorms this time of year, and they flood and tend to get very muddy and flow, current flow extremely, extremely strong. So this is a time of year that they are really looking for protected shelter something that will not get current and something that backs up and goes perpendicular like this uh, parallel with the uh, with the actual channel and then has a hard backing to it would be an extremely good place we will come back and look at this i believe that this navionics is showing us a dock laying right here and a dock laying right here and um, i can guarantee you that at the right time here behind these walkways of this marina or dock system that's sitting in here and we'll go look at it on google earth it's definitely going to have fish so these are some of the things that i'm really looking for in a river system whether it be a, a true run river system like the arkansas river or if i'm looking for something on the tva or the cumberland river which is where we are here so um, out of the current and protected um, are the things that i'm looking for and what type of creek channels, bends, and stuff that lead into these spawning areas that will be protected. Um, back here in the back of this, docks, docks and marinas seem to be a really good place um, during the actual spawn once the fish get to that. So um, that's something that I pay attention to while I'm looking for pre-spawn and spawning mm -hmm. fish. Um, Michael, easy big boy. My dog's trying to eat somebody in here. So... Um, Back to the pre-spawn part of this. So we're looking for fish. They're going to stage and position. So like if we just go back to that one little area that, that I had pulled up right here. Um, as you look at this, a pre-spawn area to this obviously is this point. So this is very simple. There's only one point. There's only one back of spawning cove. So this, this makes this example um, easier to work with. This is a very deep area. I'm not saying that this is the best one on the lake. I'm just using this as an example, okay? Um, as we move up the lake and we start going through some things, some of the places that you're going to look for for pre-spawn fish are going to be migration points that are intersected by a point or a ditch. So here's your channel coming in to the back of Smith Branch. And it makes this bend as we come in here. This right here would be a very good stopping point for a pre-spawn fish. Um, now, as we look at this with Google Earth, it's probably as shallow as that is. Probably shows us some water will on different things such as that. Um, the way that we attack it would really have to do a lot to do with water temperature, depth, and water color. Um, it could be anything from a spinnerbait, chatterbait, to a jerkbait with more water clarity or, um, I don't know, a jig. I mean, you could drag a um, Carolina rig. Um, but generally, these fish that I'm looking for in the pre-spawn area on this type of reservoir are going to be pretty shallow. Um, Old Hickory's got a little bit of water color to it, it being a river. It's not a crystal clear impoundment by any means, but it's not a mud hole. Um, some of the areas of this lake that I really like and I spent a lot of time in are really up past this bridge. Um, this is kind of kind of a halfway point in this lake, really. The bridge really kind of segments from the point that you become a river system and a lake. And... Um, I, I personally, just me being from Oklahoma and a shallow water fisherman, I really am intrigued with the upper end of Old Hickory. Um, you can see why with all the backwaters. Um, it's just got so many different variables and places that, that you can get in and get away from, from the current such as this. As long as it doesn't blow through, when things blow through like this, then sometimes... Um, they may get too much current and it may not be what they're in, but then then you start looking at these little pockets. I mean, I promise you there's fish in this place in the springtime if there's enough water there. Um, as we move on up, there's some really bigger creeks, uh, such as this one right here, um, that go a long ways back uh, into the abyss of the creek itself before you actually get into a true natural creek. Um, these are also going to be extremely good 
spawning and pre-spawn areas to fish. Um, same thing, we're going to be looking for points, uh, possibly roadbeds, submerged roadbeds, such as the one that they're showing here marked. Um, roadbeds are great places in pre-spawn because they generally run right across the mouths, just such as this. And I'm not saying that this is one, that it's going to work and like this is a waypoint, but um, lots of lakes across the country have roadbeds in them. The reason that they seem to be so strong in the springtime is, is because a lot of times you catch them covering, uh, going across the mouth of these spawning bays. And so it is a really good staging spot. Uh, for fish to stop and hold up. Um, can't tell you guys how many times big bags of fish have been caught off of something as simple as a roadbed uh, with an underwater culvert that might only be seven, eight, nine foot, 15 foot uh, deep. And the majority of the females as they swim into the spawning areas to get ready to spawn run into that roadbed and they just collect here. And then as the spawn moves on and it warms up and they may go further, we get the cold front that comes, you know, for everybody. You know how it is. It's been nice all week. You've been at work and it's been 75 to 85 degrees every day. And then Saturday comes and it drops down to 45, you know. And those fish really just backed up just a little bit a lot of times, guys. And they'll just come right back to something as simple as that first staging spot, which was that roadbed. Um, the fish that were up here on the flats that your buddies were catching a week ago with a chatterbait. Same thing with the post spawn. They could also return back to a place such as just that right there. So these are just kind of some of the things that I'm looking for during the uh, pre-spawn. Um, like I say, I'm really looking for protected areas, things out of the current. And um, also keeping in mind floods, you know, um, things that are dead end, so somewhat of a creek. And um, the dead end deal was a big deal on Old Hickory. Um, the dead end deal is actually, I'll go into a little story, is how I made the All-American. It was a big deal, and uh, I'll tell you guys that story once I get to Google Earth, and I can actually even show you the pocket that I caught them out of and what set that what set that up. But <clears throat> as you guys can see, um, you get a lot of uh, creek channel markings and stuff like that from Navionics. I, while I do like this this uh, this picture right here, I enjoy Google Earth much, much more. So let's jump over to Google Earth and let's cover a little bit of uh, spawn and pre-spawn on Old Hickory. All right, guys, here we are on Google Earth. So I'm just going to start right here at the mid section of this lake um, where the bridge is. And, uh, and we're just going to go up late because I don't have five hours. Nobody wants to listen to this for five hours. We're going to pick out. Um, one of these creeks up here in this lake and, and, and break this down at this upper end as far as uh, spawn, pre-spawn fish and, and where they would be located. Um, this creek, let's find one of the bigger ones that I know that I spent some time in. This one right here will work just fine. Um, so we're moving from wintertime into pre-spawn and um, this is a time of year, March, February in some parts of the country, but primarily March um, for most of the south and then maybe even into April if you're way up north. Um, you're, you're, you're moving these fish have been moving for a while coming from their winter deep haunts wherever that was um, out of current or slower current areas that were vertical banked and, and deeper and now they're going to make the move into the spawning bays and the places that they're going to spawn and lay their eggs for the springtime. Um, this is a good spawning cove. This is a creek that I spent some time in. Um, we just looked at it on on, uh, on the Navionics chip. Um, I like Google Earth for many, many reasons. Um, it lets me, shows me things that I get to see that I wouldn't see any other way. Um, I was just looking at this to make sure this wasn't a road bed. I'm sure this is a power line would be my guess uh, going across there like that. But that, that potentially could have been an old road bed. I see power lines on that cut through right there. Um, this is a dead end pocket, right? So um, this is just right main off the, the main river, but this still is a dead end pocket, you know, um, something that I'm looking for in the spring. Um, same thing back here. These are going to be the more areas that you're going to see more spawning fish, especially earlier in the spawn. Um, you're going to find the fish further back into the creeks as well as the upper end of the lake, right? So you start off early in the year you generally see lakes fire 
um, in the in the upper ends, which is usually the shallower, flatter parts of the lake, because they tend to warm a little quicker. Um, and then and then it kind of progresses down the lake as the spawn progresses. And quite frankly, same thing will happen in these creeks. So like the very first spawners that you may see in this lake could potentially be up this far. Now, one thing that I just thought of as I'm saying that, um, TVA is notorious for having a winter pool and a summer pool. And for you guys that don't live around or know what I'm talking about, they literally draw down these lakes every winter down to a winter pool. And sometimes that can be five foot on some of them. Some of them it's as much as 10 or 12, or I think uh, it's like Cherokee may even be 18 feet or something like that. Um, so they vary depending on where they're located in the system and how much water they can hold. Um, a lot of these fish do not come in here um, and spawn until it gets later in the year where it actually becomes um, summer pool. I know Kentucky Lake, those fish are, are notorious for really holding off and, and not doing their deal. And then once the water comes, then they all jump up there on the bank and lay their eggs. So um, this picture was taken in the summertime. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. This is a little clock system up here I just clicked. Uh, you guys will see it in your, in your pull down menu. Now you do have to be using Google Earth Pro. So I know that question is going to pop up. Please pay attention right here. You won't have to ask the question. You do have to have Google Earth Pro downloaded onto your computer, which is free. But you do have to have that. and You do have to be using a laptop to be able to see this clock. If you guys figure out how to do it on an iPad, please drop me a line. I would love to be able to do this on my iPad. I would kill to be able to do it on my iPad. But it doesn't work. It has to be on a uh, desktop system. And uh, anyway, so you click on this and this will do a couple cool things for you. So this is actually the calendar. You click on this and change the date that the actual picture was taken. And you get different views, different times of the year. And what we're generally looking for when we're doing this is, is we're looking for low water periods um, when the lake happened to be really, really low and it'll give us a better picture of what these areas look like with no water on them. So you have a better idea when you come back in and they are flooded, um, what they look like. So here we are in April of 210. That's about the lowest level I have seen. I would think there would be a winter picture. There's one in January of 07 that really showed that point. Okay, so let's go back to January of 07. We're gonna use this one right here, um, just because it appears to be the lowest. Um, some of these flats and the flatter sides of the creeks are going to be the sides that they that they they generally tend to prefer because they're going to spawn generally on the flatter side, um, as opposed to the side that's actually got the creek channel in it. So that's something to keep in mind whenever you're fishing coves or pockets or creeks such as this. Um, I like to find things that are not silted in. Silt is a big deal in all reservoirs and river systems. Um, the fish need two or three things during the spawn. They need, like we said, they like to be out of the current. They need the water temperature to be in the 60s or and so, and um, they need a hard bottom. A hard bottom is critical for fish to spawn in the spring. So some of the things that I'm looking for um, in a river system or any reservoir is hard bottom places. So anytime I get a man-made riprap uh, rock in the back of a spawning cove, it's going to really draw my attention and I'm going to focus on that. Um, if you don't have anything that's man-made, it could possibly be wood laydowns. Um, I've seen them use wood laydowns. If you have lily pads and grass, water willow, things such as that, which you guys have here on this lake, water willow is going to be a big player. Um, now, the water willow may be dead and brown looking from um, the past winter and may not be green yet, but they don't care. They will definitely spawn on the basis of the water willow. So, they're looking for easily anything vertical, anything hard that they can fan up against and use their tail. This picture, while I thought it was the best one to use, I do not agree at this point. You'll also notice that some of the newer images tend to be a little better quality than some of the older stuff. See, that's those are all pretty good pictures. You can get a better idea of what some of this looks like. So... Uh, Let's just use this one right here. This is a pretty good picture. Um, all this spawning areas, really good looking spawning areas. All this right through here. Um, just any pocket that you can find. And then as you, as, as the uh, spawn progresses, 
the places that they're going to use will be more main lake, main river oriented, or just off of, such as this first one that I talked about um, when you guys came in. Some of the places that I really enjoy fishing on river systems that are not as obvious as everyone else is the stuff that's just right off the river. Um, and it comes in and has dead ends like this. These are man-made dikes. Um, they do this so that the river system stays navigable for barges and stuff. It's very common for them to be laid out this way. The trees are just grown over, but they actually stacked rock here and built built jetties and, and dikes and stuff um, when this lake was impounded, and that's what this is left over from. But like, like I said, again, a lot of times this thing may be rock, and the trees have actually grown up over top of it, but you got that hard bottom, which is what I was talking about, and it's it's back up against and protected from the current. So even if it was to flood in the springtime and come in here, um, that's a big deal uh, to have that protection. Some of them go a lot further back in, and those are the ones that I really, really like more so than the little short ones. But if the weather's stable and the water color is good, those little short ones work just as well. But um, these little cut-ins going into these places are some of my very favorite places to fish in the spring. And uh, the mouths of each one of these in pre-spawn and post-spawn should be high potential areas um, going up into these. So like if you take this one right here in particular, um, this is a good example of what I mean by one that's a kind of a dead end. You don't see any big major tributary or creek feeding into this backwater. It's actually a dead oxbow. Um, those are the kinds of places, maybe even slipping back into here. These are the kinds of places that if you can get far enough back into some of these, depending on how, no matter how bad it floods, how muddy the river gets, how muddy the lake gets, these are the last places to be affected. These are the most secure, the, 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 the best place and the best habitat for these bass to stay uh, during the springtime and stay protected. Um, those are some of the things that I really look for. And like I say, the ones that go further back into these are going to be more protected than the ones that are shorter, uh, just off the beating path. That appears to be just a pond, although it may have some access at high water times and conditions. Um, but see, one such as this, this actually does have a creek coming into it. So if you had a lot of local rain, and that's something to think about as well, is if your lake was to flood in the spring and get high really quickly, is it from local rain? You know, if you're on a river system, it could actually be from quite a ways away, and that water just, they're turning on the water to get rid of it somewhere else and bring it down through. Um, if you live on a normal reservoir, chances are it's just about got to be uh, local rain to uh, raise your reservoir up highly. And something to give thought is, see, this has a creek channel in it. So this creek would potentially muddy up the back of uh, this area back here, whereas the one that I showed you before, um, completely protected. So I'm sure as we go on through this, I'll find one that's just like super, super protected somewhere that, that really fits the bill for what I'm talking about. Um, like I say, the mouths of these places are really, really good places to start looking in the pre-spawn. And then as you work your way in um, and get closer and closer to the spawn, the further and further back you will actually catch fish. This, if not a creek, which it may be, is a very, very protected place. Um, it's not as flat as I'd like it to be. I'd like it to be wider and flatter, but that is a protected area. I wouldn't necessarily call it a dead end. It may be a creek. This is a very protected area, and this is a very protected area right off of the main river. Um, would definitely have a lot of spawners in it. Um, this area as well. You know, at the time, I don't think I had ever been to Chickamauga. But, you know, this area of Old Hickory reminds me a lot of the upper end of Chick. Um, has a lot of the same features where it has the backwater coves, a lot of them being um, old oxbows uh, that, were, that were there before the, before the river system was put in. I almost feel like I'm going the wrong way. I hope I'm still going upriver if I didn't go backwards. But, uh, See, this is another thing that I like is areas such as this way back in here protected. What I like about this kind of stuff is, is I've got a lot of different types of cover in here. When you start getting into docks and stuff, which give fish a place to live year round. Um, 
I'm, I'm attracted to docks, uh, definitely in the springtime. Um, they will use docks themselves to stage. They may be on the dock that sits the furthest out from every all the others. This one dock right here could have the majority of the fish on. Or it may be the brush piles that the people that live here that put brush piles off the sides of their docks so they can crappie fish in the winter end up being the deal. Either way, I've always been a big proponent of docks in the springtime. Uh, they're a big player. You see them across the country used as tournaments uh, to win tournaments off of. And, and quite frankly, it's because they are staging areas. That's, that's why they're there. Um, that is part of the movement of the ocean. So if you guys will, if you'll use Google Earth to slide around and do different things. Um, also, guys, if you want to drop waypoints and do things, it's really easy to do. You can click on that button up there. You can label it. We can name this one. Uh, docs and you can save that into a file under old hickory and um, if there's a video on my channel if you guys go back and look on how to convert your google waypoints into actual waypoints that'll go onto your unit i've got a 15 or 20 minute video on my youtube channel um, tell you guys exactly how to do that and exactly how I, how I do that process so it's really simple i go through and i mark maps all the time i think i did a video on this last fall on a river system and so um, Wanted to drop one here for the springtime since we're getting into it. Guys, it's March right now. Uh, April's on its way. I know the trees around my house are starting to get little buds on them, so it won't be long before the leaves are, are starting to bloom and the bass will be laying on the bed. So until next time, guys, I really appreciate y'all being here. Like I say, if you haven't been here before, think about subscribing, dude. I put a lot of work into this channel, uh, making things work and uh, getting you guys some really good content on how to catch a bass. So uh, leave your comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And until next time, I'm out of here.